Good morning. So good to see each and every one of you this morning as we gather together to worship on this warm summer day. Uh, But it's a beautiful day that the Lord has given us, and we always want to be thankful for the breath that he's given us in our lungs. And so we're just grateful to to pause and gather this morning as a congregation Uh, and just to love Jesus, but also love each other well, because we want to love and encourage each other. So a couple announcements before we dive into the service. First, this week is Jerusalem Project. For those of you who aren't aware, a bunch of the area youth groups are gathering together, and we're going to do work projects to help people who are in need. And so we're getting a bunch of youth to do work projects. And so that is great, and it's always a little scary, right? So just be praying that there's no serious injuries or harms or anything like that going on this week, Uh, but also pray that there will be spiritual impact in the lives of the youth as well as the lives of the families that we are blessing. And so it's actually kicking off tonight with a service at New Pleasant. And so it, even if you're not participating in the, the building activity, you, youth, you can still come to the evening services. So tonight we'll be leaving from here at six o'clock to head over to New Pleasant. So I encourage you, even if you're not able to do the projects, still come and be a part of the services. So that's one thing we've got coming up. Um, School is not too far away. And so we're going to have a back to school kind of kickoff on Wednesday, August 10th. So really looking forward to that and excited about that. We're going to have a food truck out here. We're going to have slides and games, and we're just going to have a good time fellowshipping. And so it's for all ages, from the youngest of kids to the oldest of not kids, right? And so my wife's due on August 12th. So if we have our kid a couple days sooner, you might get to see our child then. Who knows? Uh, My wife's not in here to verify that, but that's what I'm saying. So it'll it'll be a lot of fun, so make sure you have that on your schedule for August 10th. We're going to be doing that here on that Wednesday. Also, after that week, Children's Ministry is going to be kicking back up on Wednesday nights because they haven't been meeting. Um, But along with that, we need at least two more kids volunteers to start helping on Wednesday nights. They've been really short-staffed and not able to, you know, it's been hard to even be able to have enough adults there for the kids. And so we really need two more adults before we can really kick off kids' ministry back off on Wednesday night. So think about that, pray about that, see if God's kind of leading you or stirring you to help in children's ministry in that way. And so those are our announcements for the morning, but now we get to the good stuff of worshiping Jesus. So let's just pray and ask God's spirit to be with us as we we worship. So let's pray. For um, each person who's here this morning, Lord, um, God, I pray that you would bless this time, Lord, close us in, um, speak through uh, each person up here today, Lord, speak through James as he preaches and brings um, the message that you've given him, Lord, God, we love you so much, and again, are so thankful for the grace and uh, mercy, Lord, that you so freely offered us, Lord, and we want to meet with you this morning, help us to be sensitive to your spirit, God, and um, again, what it is that you say through the songs and through the messages as well, God, you know, we pray, amen. Before we start this morning. Um, I did not know this song at all that we're singing this first song and I had to study it this week and as I was learning it I was both blessed and challenged blessed by what an honor it is to be invited to the marriage of a lamb Mm -hmm. I got cold chills got cold chills right now and then it says repeatedly that we're getting ready for you I want to be challenged by that, to know that I'm getting ready for that. It should be my daily prayer and my daily interest to be getting ready for the marriage of the Lamb. Please stand as we sing. to the marriage of the Lamb to come and worship Him and celebration is the joining of the bride and the Son the two becoming one and all the prophecies fulfilled
Your glory. 
Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here today. God, as we come together to pray and to sing songs, and Lord, now the opening up of your word and reading it together, Jesus, I ask that your Holy Spirit would be here, just like we just declared in that song. And Lord, I want to go back to the other song talk about when we all see you what a day of rejoicing that will be Jesus if we have faith in you today we believe and we know that we will see you again and Lord as we stand before you one day God I pray that it would be a day of rejoicing and it would not be a day of of shock and sorrow and regret and because of that I ask that you would be among us this morning, God, that you would make us moldable in your hands. Jesus, we ask that you would show us things in our lives that we need to work on, things that we need to allow you to mold in our lives to be better followers of you. Or we would be foolish to sit here today and think that we are above you continuing to work and move in our life. But that's exactly the reason why we come is to let you shape and mold and change us. So Father, as we continue on in this series, Lord, I pray that you would speak into our lives and God, that you would shape and mold and change us so that indeed when we do stand before you one day, it will be a day of rejoicing and joy beyond anything we've ever experienced in our life because we have prepared ourselves to be in your presence. God, help us not to rob you of any aspect of our life, but to give you freedom to work and move in the way that you see fit. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for this time together. We lift up our brothers and sisters that are traveling in vacation. 
We lift up those who have lost loved ones, who are dealing with grief. We lift up those who are burdened with pain and ailments today. And God, we ask that you would be with all of them in your own special way, in the way that they need. Lord, may they experience the presence of your spirit in their lives today. And may we experience it right now in this moment as we gather together as the body of Christ. We love you. We thank you. And we ask all this in the precious and holy name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it is good to be back together with you. And before I get started, I do want to say thank you very much to uh, Haley and Pastor Timmy as they uh, spoke for me over the past couple weeks. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to have that time off. Um, I try to spend a lot of time in, in sermon prep, and so for them to cover for me gave me the opportunity to go on vacation and actually have a vacation and not be concerned about what I was going to be talking about while I was there. And if you've ever had to speak before, you know that's it's kind of what it is. So thank you for the opportunity to rest, and thank you for them for covering for me. Um, as we are continuing in our sermon series on unspoken sins of the church, we're, we're two left. we got today and next week. And the next two messages are probably going to be a little more painful to receive than any of the messages that we've done so far. Um, today's message is not going to be this like awe-inspiring thing. You're not going to leave here today and be like, oh man, I feel great. This was awesome. I'm glad I came today. This is going to be a tough one. Um, we're talking about gossip and slander today. And I want to encourage you guys because... We, we, we have this particular age group, and I had to assure the first service, because we have a lot of elderly people in the first service, that this was not just limited to little old ladies who are sitting around gossiping and talking about people. And it's not just about middle school kids running around, yeah, 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 arguing with each other and telling stories and all this stuff. It's not the middle school drama, and it's not, uh, you know, old retired ladies sitting around just gossiping about other people. This aspect of sin has trickled into every age group of people in our culture. And probably the main reason is because of social media. I mean, when you think about this, even young adults now who would normally not be considered idle people, who would be out working and and don't have time to sit around and talk about stuff, we're constantly on our phone receiving information. People are posting stuff. You're getting information constantly. You get this on the news all the time. You get it through social media all the time information is constantly available to us, right? We are an information-saturated society. And because of that, I want to tell you today that just because you might be a man and just because you might be middle-aged or, you know, an adult or older than middle school or younger than an old retired lady, do not sit here today and count yourself out of the sermon. Don't check out on me. Because the main thing is, is, is sitting here today and understanding that this is something that every single one of us are prone to, whether we realize it or not, and we've probably all participated in it at some point in time, whether we would like to admit it or not, because it's very enticing. And when you look at Scripture, as I was doing my research over the past week, I was pulling verses of scripture trying to talk about gossip and slander. And most of the passage, I'll just give this a little disclaimer, most of the passages do deal with some of the older ladies in the church that the apostles are, are, are rebuking and saying, hey, you know, they're, they're idle. You need to tell them to get married and have children and get, get busy so they're not talking about people. So it's talking about women a lot. But it's also talking and referring to it about these tasty morsels. Okay? And so I want you to picture this. We were at a wedding last night, and before the wedding, as they were doing the pictures, and everybody was waiting to sit down and do the dinner after the wedding, they had these little cocktail things on these sticks, running around with little fruit and little chicken tenders and stuff on the sticks, and people were eating the fire out of these things. I'm talking about as soon as they brought out a tray, the tray was gone. Constantly. I saw people eat multiples, multiples of these little uh, skewer things with fruit and, and chicken and stuff on them, and they were just gobbling them down because it was tasty little morsels of food, right? But you know this because if you've ever gotten like the bag of candy and it's just like the little like candy size like thing and you sit there and you eat them like, oh, that was good. And you just keep eating them. It's one thing to have like a big candy bar and you eat it and like, that was nice. I probably need to quit now because I just ate a whole candy bar. You eat like 
50 of those things because there's tasty little morsels. And before you know it, you're like, I feel terrible. And you weigh 290 pounds. And you're just like, how am I like this? Because we have a tendency to endorse in the little morsels more than we realize. And so a lot of scripture refers to gossip and slander as these tasty morsels of words that we just devour because whether you realize it or not, we as people, we love this stuff. We do. We love information. We love the inside scoop. We, we like to know things, and, and it makes us feel important and in the know to know those things. And so one of the things I want to do is just I want you to understand. All right? Gossip and slander is one of those things. It's very prevalent among the world. You see it in the world. I mean, think about how many lawsuits there are with slander, defamation of character, all these things that like you deal with, like it's a big deal. Like this is not just a world, it's a legal issue as far as that goes. But we have witnessed, I have personally witnessed gossip and slander inside the church. I've witnessed it here at Graham, not any time recently, but through the years, you know, I've, I've been around Graham for at least 20 years now. And so it's been a long time, you, you know, it'd be surprising if I hadn't. I've witnessed it among pastors who are meeting together. Okay, it's not just limited to you know people. I mean, we're talking about leaders in the church. I've witnessed it um, during prayer request time. You know, it's amazing how many people love to give prayer requests and share all this information to show everybody how much information they know about other people's lives during prayer request time. And I've done that with adults, and I've seen it in youth ministry. I used to have to like. Stop the youth. I'm like, hey, let's just pray for them. Let's not share about their lives. And like, we're not gossiping. We just mention their name. Let's pray for them. And let's not share this. It's very tempting and enticing to have information and to want to share it. And it's also very tempting and enticing to receive information because we like that more than we realize. So let's start with defining what these two things are. Let, let's start with slander. Slander is the utterance of false charges or misrepresentations which defame and damage another's reputation. Okay, another definition would be a false or defamatory oral statement about a person. And so when you're looking at slander, it's basically dealing with false information or lies. But gossip, on the other hand, and you know, the definitions can refer to gossip as an object or gossip as a person who gossips. A person who habitually reveals personal or sensational facts about others. A rumor or report of an intimate nature or just chatty talk. Now, I want you to think about this because the main difference is lies and truth or basically possible truth. Okay? And so, what you need to take away from today, before we even get started, I'm going to give you this. This is basically the point of the sermon. Whether it's a lie or whether it's truth, we as followers of Christ are called to be quiet and to not share information and broadcast it in a way that would hurt other people. Now that, and, and, and some of you may say, well, well, if it doesn't hurt anybody, can we share it then? You have to be really careful in this. And we're going to talk about a lot of different aspects of this because a lot of times the information that we receive, we might really think is true. You ever done that before? Receive information and you thought you're, it was true and you thought the source that shared it was a reliable source and then it turns out to be false? Well, then it's like if you've shared that information that you received from what you thought was a reliable source, now you've participated in slander. And so you have to be really careful about this because we know that slander is wrong. It's a lie. We know that's simple. But gossip is the one that a lot of Christians struggle with because we have a tendency to justify information and the sharing of that information for various reasons. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 20 through 21. Paul is getting ready to close out his letter to the Corinthians. And in this, Paul is expressing his concern for the church of Corinth as he's finishing up for this letter, and his demeanor in his writing, in his, as he's writing this out, his demeanor changes as he's writing this letter. And it's pretty crazy because Paul, a lot of times, could be very uplifting. He could be very encouraging. I mean, he could write all this stuff. And then, and then there's other passages where Paul's like, hey, 
you've been saying this stuff about me, but whenever I show up, are you going to actually say this to my face? Because I'm not afraid to come and stand before you and hash this out. And so this is kind of one of those, those portions of Scripture where Paul is writing this. And in verse 20, look at what it says. It says, I'm afraid that when I come, I won't like what I find. Now think about that. It's really hard to connect the dots on that because we don't really have anybody. I mean, even though we're, we're part of the Wesleyan Church and we have people at district and, and denominational sources who may come and visit us from time to time, it's really hard to really, most of us probably don't care a whole lot about them. But when you think about someone like Paul, I mean, Jesus appeared to him. Paul's a really big deal. And for Paul to come to your church and say, I'm afraid I'm not going to like what I find, that would kind of be intimidating to think like, probably the next best thing would be Jesus to come to your church at this point. And to think that they would come and they wouldn't like what they find. And he says, and you won't like my response. Because when Paul comes, if he doesn't like what he finds, then you're not going to like the response he's going to have to it. I am afraid that I will find quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorderly behavior. Now, I want to stop right there because we are focusing on gossip and slander. But what I want you to realize is, is that the things that Paul just mentioned are very much connected and intertwined with one another. I mean, you're talking about a web. So you look at quarreling. If people are arguing and fighting with each other, don't you think gossiping and slander is going to come along with it? Absolutely. A lot of times, quarreling could be caused by gossip and slander. So that's connected. Jealousy. People being jealous of one another, wanting to outdo one another, wanting what other people have, generally comes with gossiping and slander. Then people get angry about you. You ever been mad because somebody's talking about you? Whether it be true or untrue business, how many of you have been mad about somebody saying something about you? All right. Selfishness. People are selfish. And if you're selfish, you're going to try to make other people look bad. And in arrogance, if you want to elevate yourself above other people, gossiping and slander will probably be a part of that. And disorderly behavior. Basically just chaos. All those things are tied together. If you have gossiping and slandering as part of the body of Christ, you will more than likely find all the other things that Paul just mentioned. And so in verse 21, he goes on to say, Yes, I am afraid that when I come again, God will humble me in your presence. So Paul has went. He's established this church. He, he's writing to them, making sure that they're continuing to be the people that God has called them to be, doing the right things, and Paul's holding them accountable. But he's afraid that God's going to humble him when he gets there, and he's not going to like what he finds. And I will be grieved because many of you have not given up your old sins. And he finishes up by saying, you have not repented of your impurity, sexual immorality, and eagerness for lustful pleasure. But it's also including the list that he gave before that. And what we need to realize as followers of Jesus Christ is that when any kind of sin is present in our lives or inside the church, you may think, oh, well, it's just gossip, it's just slander, it's not that big of a deal, it's just something that we shouldn't do it, but you know, people just tend to do it, and it's not that big of a deal. You have to understand that when there is sin present inside the body of Christ, and it is allowed to be there, more than likely, sin is present on the whole spectrum, and you just haven't realized it yet. But even, we talked about this several weeks ago, even the tiniest sins, those are the ones that when allowed to dwell inside the body of Christ and be a part of who we are, are the ones that grow and fester and it's like cancer just moving throughout the body of Christ. And that's the things that will kill the body of Christ faster than the big sins. You can look at churches across the world and pastors can have moral failures. They can do really stupid stuff. And church leaders and Sunday school teachers can do some really stupid stuff, big sins. And the church can recover from those things. It may hurt them, but the church can recover. But when sin is allowed to be ingrained and entwined in who we are, even the smallest sin that's accepted among us, that is the beginning of the death of the body of Christ. 
This is why quarreling or gossip and slander is so important to make sure that we as a people will not allow this to be a part of our life. It's going to greatly hinder your testimony as a follower of Jesus Christ. So let's talk about it. Point number one. As a follower of Christ, you are called to exercise control. You are called to exercise control. If you are human, if you're a human being, you completely understand the impulse and desire to say something or pass along information when you get it, right? How many of you like whenever you find out something good or you, you, you get an end to something, you're like, hey, you need to try this. This is great. Uh, um, I don't know if you guys have heard about the Mac Bids website going on in Cowpens, but you know, like we've just constantly like talked about it and told other people, and now so many people are on it, you can't even get a good deal anymore because people love to share information. All right. The problem is, is that information can be very harmful and damaging. It can hurt more than we ever realize. You know, you think about teachers. Teachers don't get paid great money. You think about the stuff that they have to put up with, all the things that they have to do. They figured it up one time, and even though like, they have three months off during the summer, the amount of hours that they put in, what they get paid per hour is really, really low. But there's a desire in people's lives to share information with other people. You with me? There is. There's something very rewarding about sharing information and helping other people out. The problem is, is that when personal information and things like gossip and slander begin to be what is shared, it gives us a false sense of worth in our lives. Because we think that, like, we love the fact whenever we help someone or we give them information, and we love to see kids figure out something and learn it for the first time, that is one of the most rewarding things we will ever have. And so whenever we share information, which could be gossip or slander with other people, people like to see the look on their face and their responses and how they receive that and how they like, and then they keep coming back for more, and it makes it gives us a false sense of valuableness in our life. And you got to be super careful because you might not be the type of person to, to share information but you might be the type of person who likes to receive information. And that's dangerous too. Personal information, gossip and slander, is the ones that can really, really damage us and hurt us. It leads us down roads that Christ never intended for us to go down. And so James chapter 1, verse 26. I love the book of James. Um, not because that's my name. But I, just, I love this book because it's very straightforward. It's very hard-nosed. This is more of along the lines of my personality. And so I really like when people just kind of says it and say what they mean, mean what they say. And James says this in verse 26 of chapter 1. It says, If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. That's hard teaching. That's hard-nosed. I mean, you think about we, we're called to exercise control in our lives, especially with our mouths. And then James says, if you can't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself and your religious religion is worthless. That's hard teaching. Because many of us know that like, if we were sitting here and being honest today, that thing right there gets us in a lot of trouble. We always say a lot of things we probably don't necessarily should say. So your tongue... The words that come out of your mouth is one of the dangerous, most dangerous parts of your body. It is one of the greatest weapons for harm that you have in your possession. It can do in just a few moments what a lifetime of good deeds and apologies could never undo. You could say things to people and hurt them and break them and cause hurt and pain in their life that you can never undo. You'll never be able to undo it. That's how powerful our tongue is. And I fell victim to this personally. There have been times in my life where I didn't intentionally like try. Like we weren't arguing. There, there was no time where I was arguing with someone and I just wanted to say something to hurt them in that moment. There's just been times where I've idly have just been speaking 
and said stuff that's really hurt or bothered people I've had to go back and apologize for. It's just what we do. And, and so many passages of Scripture are devoted to teaching us not just idly talking. Now, now this, is, this is huge because how many of you like talking? I don't like talking in front of people. You, you've heard me talk about that. But I do enjoy sitting down with people and talking personally one-on-one. I really enjoy that. It's, it's very uh, fulfilling for me in a lot of ways. There's a reason why a telephone was so popular and why we carry them around in our pocket and everybody's got one. We love talking and communicating. But when you read Scripture, there's tons of passages of Scripture that call us to be careful and not just talk. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. It says, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Hard-nosed teaching, right? Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Proverbs 18, verse 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. And so you're sitting here today, and it's very important to understand this. Okay, there is a call in our life to make sure that we are very careful not to just speak idly, because when we talk too much, we get ourselves in trouble, and sharing things like that, but also to understand that the words that come from your mouth can bring life or death. Now, in most cases, if we're not careful, the words that come from our mouth will bring death because we are sinful by nature. Our natural inclination is to be negative. My natural inclination as a person, I'm, I'm, people say I'm a pessimist. I say I'm a realist, okay? I, I'm one of those people. It's just like, for, for me personally, my natural inclination is to like, focus on negative things all right, so that we can fix them and make them better. The words that come from our mouth will bring life or death. And we have to be very intentional to make sure that the words are coming from our mouth are bringing life. Because if we're not intentional and we're not focusing on that, more than likely they're going to be bringing death. Now the problem is, is that most of us, if we're not intentional about our words, may not seem like our words are bringing death, but more than likely it's just a slow poison that's seeping out that brings death over long periods of time. You with me on that? That's important for us to understand. Because while your death may not bring a deathly blow all in one moment and not remove the head from the source, if you're just seeping out poison constantly over days and months and years of time, eventually those words will bring about death. It may not seem like it at first, but eventually it will. And like I said, we may do this by accident. You know, Pastor Timmy was talking about Jerusalem Project coming up. I remember very specifically a time several years ago at Jerusalem Project when I was still a youth pastor. And we were doing a project. We were building a deck on the back of this lady's house. We were all having a good time, doing work. We take a break. We go sitting around the water cooler, which just happens to be where most of the gossip happens, right? All right. So we're sitting there, and for whatever reason, the kids start talking about Mattress Max. Mattress Max will save you money. You all know, okay? So back during this time... Mattress Max was still alive. He's no longer with us right now. He's, he's passed away. But during this time, he was still alive. And I remember saying to the group of kids, I was like, I would never buy a mattress from Mattress Max. Why not? I'm like, because his commercials are really annoying. And, like, and, and that was just like, I had, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like now, I'm like, that was stupid. Had no reason to say that. But literally, his commercials were on every other commercial, on every channel that you could possibly turn your TV on. They were there. Every single person knew what Mattress Max could do for you. And one of the kids was like, that's my grandpa. I was like, no, it ain't. He said, no, for real, that's my grandpa. That's my mom's dad. I was like, oh, well, uh, 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 excuse me while I go hang myself. It, it was one of the most embarrassing moments in, in ministry, honestly, because here I am, a youth pastor. Now, the kid didn't go to our church, but it was a very embarrassing moment in youth ministry. And, and I remember sitting there thinking, it's like, it was a harmless comment. I didn't do it intentionally to offend any one of them. But the words that quickly came from my mouth because of like some weird annoyance that I have with annoying things, so therefore I'm not going to buy something from him, which is stupid, it could have really hurt or damaged like that teenager. Like, for me as a youth pastor, to say something like that could have really... Now, thank God it didn't, but it really could have affected him to make him not want anything to do with the church anymore. 
or not want anything to do with, with Christianity anymore. And we have to be very careful not to fall prey to that because you never know what the words that come from your mouth will do at any given moment in time. And it could be intentional and it could be unintentional. And more than likely, if you sit here and you claim to be a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, none of us are doing it intentionally. But we're justifying things in our life because we enjoy it and it makes us feel good and we get this temporary satisfaction from information we receive and information that we share. And that's dangerous. And we need to realize that. So point number two, slander and gossip are sin. You, you, you need to accept that and write that down and put that in your, in your bank of valuable information to keep as a follower of Jesus Christ that slander and gossip are sin. And there's no beating around the bush about it. They are. And it's easy to identify slandering as a sin because it deals with lying, false information, uh, defamation of character, things like that. Even in the Old Testament, God was very intentional about giving laws to the people of Israel about slander. Look at Exodus 23, verses 1 through 3. He says, You must not pass along false rumors. You must not cooperate with evil people by lying on the witness stand. You must not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you are called to testify in a dispute, do not be swayed by the crowd to twist justice. And do not slant your testimony in favor of a person just because that person is poor. There are also multiple passages in Exodus and Deuteronomy that talk about not slanting your testimony for those who are wealthy. So whether they're poor or rich, we shouldn't slant our testimony. Leviticus 19 verse 16 says, Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. And do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened, for I am the Lord. Now there's an obvious calling to understand that slander is sinful. And if there is slander going on inside the body of Christ, inside of our church, I want you to think about this for a moment. I want you to be really careful whenever I say this and you consider this. If there's slander going on inside of the body of Christ and you see a fellow believer who is slandering other people, whether they're slandering people outside the church or they're slandering people inside the church, that is not acceptable among Christianity. We are called to not do this. This is obviously a sin. And so according to Matthew chapter 18, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we are obligated to go to that person personally and confront them in that sin in a loving way, not in a, this is sinful, you shouldn't be doing this, you know, like blah, 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 and like chewing, out, chewing them out and looking down on them, but going to them in a loving way and confronting them in a Christ-like way that says, hey, this is what Scripture says. I feel like what you're doing is wrong and confronting them about it. And if they don't accept that, then you take two to three witnesses. And if they don't accept that, we bring them before the church. Because I'm telling you, I believe this with my whole heart, that gossip and slander is as dangerous as any other sin that could be inside the body of Christ. It will tear a church apart faster than anything else. But gossip is the one that so many Christians try to justify. And you'll have some people say, well, if it's truth, people deserve to know, right? Do people deserve to know? Every one of you is like, yes, no, maybe. Uh. It is very difficult when we are presented with information and we are an information-privileged society. We are bombarded with information. And it's very difficult to know what is the godly right thing to do with that information when you receive it. But we need to come to an understanding today that God has called us, called us to be uplifting and loving towards other people. And there may be information that might be true, but it might not be your calling to be the one to reveal the truth to the world. And you have to be really careful because there are some people who like to receive information, but they don't care nothing about sharing it. I know people in my family, people I love very much, who love to receive information. They're not going to gossip. They're not going to go tell anybody else about it. But if something happens, people say, hey, have you heard about this? Is this true? 
well, I don't know, but I know who to call. And they know somebody they can call to go ask that question and get the information about it. And then they have the information. Now they're very satisfied that they have the information. That's all they needed is to receive the information themselves. They don't have to say it. They just need to receive it. We have to be careful because even in those moments, as we receive information, you have to remember that you are allowing someone else to do the sharing. You're participating in the sin more than you ever thought or realized because you're giving them the opportunity to do what Scripture commands us not to do. In our lives, when it comes to gossip, when it comes to receiving information, there were six questions that I really thought about that I feel like we should probably ask ourselves before we decide to share information that we receive with other people. The first one was, is do I know for 100% sure this is true? Um, somebody came up to me after the first service and said that he had a coworker that he used to work with, and whenever gossip would start taking place, and so I'd say, did you hear this? He said, no, and I don't want to listen to it either, but if you got pictures, I'll look at the pictures. <laughs> and you have to be really careful to make sure that you kind of cut this stuff off before it begins. But do you know if this is 100% true? Because there have been times where I've received information from people that I believe to be truly reliable people and come to find out their information was not correct. And it doesn't mean that the majority of their information is wrong. It's just that one thing was not correct. And so we have to be super careful to understand that sometimes we may think information is true and believe it to be true, and it may not be true. And that's a possibility. So do you know for 100%? Question number two, is this something I would want others to share about me? You know, a lot of times we start talking about things and we start sharing information about others and we take no time to even ask the question, man, I'd be really mad if somebody was saying this about me. Point, or question number three, even if I didn't care that someone knew this about me, would the person be offended if I shared this? Because there are a lot of people who do not care what people say about them or, or, or about the subject at hand that's being talked about. And you would say, well, I wouldn't care if anybody knew this about me. But there, people are different. I mean, like, you have to understand this today, that there are people who are very different from you and I. And while I'm a very personal person, like, I don't even have social media because I don't care to share my life with the world, there are people who wouldn't care. But it would really bother me if people was just like taking pictures of me and posting me all over social media all the time. I get really bothered by that. Some people do that for a living, think it's great. People are different. And you have to understand that as a follower of Jesus Christ, you are called to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you start talking about sharing information about other people's lives or information about different things or entities, you have to understand that there might be some people out there who, although you might not be offended about it, they might get very offended about it. Question number four, is this uplifting or demeaning to the person? Think about the information. Like they're just positive information and negative information. And the fact that it's negative in any way probably means that you shouldn't be talking about it. It's a good indication that we should just kind of sit on it, pray for them, and do that. You know, we talked a while ago about prayer request time turning into gossip time. All you got to do is just mention your name, pray for so-and-so. You don't have to say what's going on. The Lord already knows, right? That's what Scripture says. The Lord already knows. He already knew that it was going to happen before it happened. He knows that it is happening, and he knows what needs to be done about it. And so we can just pray for that person's name and be satisfied in knowing that God will touch him in the way that God needs to touch them. We don't have to mention stuff. Number five, who all is, going, who all is this going to affect? You know, a lot of times we think, well, this is truth, and people deserve to know the truth. And a lot of times, like, truth is important. And we shouldn't just sweep stuff under the rug and, and just hide things. And at the same time, you need to understand that although something may be 100% true, and this person may 100% deserve punishment, and, and this may 100% need to happen or take place, remember that the spectrum of things and the people who are going to be affected by this is going to be much greater than you could ever think or realize. There's going to be spouses and children and family and church family. And you, you just go down the list. Work, coworkers, everybody. People are going to be affected more than we would ever realize. And question number five or six is, am I willing to stand accountable before God in sharing this information? 
And I think if we were to sit here this morning and say, you know, we, we sang the last couple of verses of that old hymn tagged on to the end of that first song. We said, when we all see Jesus, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when you actually think about standing before Jesus Christ, how many of you want to rejoice? Any of you want to cower down in shame and fear and be like, I hope I'm okay. I hope I'm getting in. We all want to stand before Christ in confidence and hope and joy and celebrate and, and sit here and think, like, am I willing to stand before Jesus Christ one day and have to give an account of, oh, I was justified in sharing this information or am I willing to just say, I'm going to pray for this person. We're going to leave it at that. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13 says, A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20 says, Fire goes out without wood, and quarrels disappear when gossip stops. You're going to find all kinds of strife and problems and everything when gossip and slander are part of the picture. And I can tell you in my own personal life, one of the most valuable things that I have in my personal life are people that I feel like I can trust. And when you start talking about friends, I'm friends with people that I can trust. And there have been people in my life that I've shared things with. And they went and shared with other people that I may be cordial to them and I may still speak to them, but we're not friends and I don't share information with them anymore. You guys understand this. In your own personal lives, how valuable is somebody that you could trust, that you could literally tell them anything and know that they're never going to share it with a soul? There's nothing more valuable than that, to have someone that you can confide in. Now, here's the issue. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are supposed to be mentoring and discipling young Christians into growing in their faith and maturity. And are we a people that they can confide in and trust in to say things to us, to ask them for, or for them to ask us for help and advice and to pray for us and know that we're not going to share it with other people? That's huge. There's nothing more valuable than that. Gossiping has no place among us as believers in Jesus Christ. I want to give a disclaimer. Can I do that? I think it's pretty fair to say when you look at the religious spectrum of the American church, and then you look at some of the other churches across the world, I think it's fair to say that we see a lot of churches today that are dealing with a lot of issues that have been long ingrained in their culture at their churches, such as financial indiscretions, sexual abuse, all these different things. And a lot of churches are dealing with that stuff now because a lot of those things were kept secret and they were swept under the rug and they weren't addressed and they were just kind of like hushed in this. And I want you to understand today that when I read this passage of Scripture, when I read all these passages of Scripture, this is not some effort to turn us into this hush, hush, quiet, quiet cult church to where whatever goes on here stays here and you're not allowed to talk about it. You with me? That's not what this is. This is a sermon dealing with us in our personal, everyday life. And when you start talking about sins inside the church and things that leaders or non-leaders do, it's very clear in Scripture that those things should be addressed. The problem is, is when those things happen, we need to make sure that we go about doing it in the proper biblical way. And we're not sharing gossip and information with other people. That We're going to the people who can help solve the issue and the problem. And in our church, we have people on the board. We have multiple staff members. We have a district superintendent. We have people at the general church in Indiana. We have a vast array of people that we can call to come in and help us decipher things if stuff goes on that needs to happen. But you do have to understand that gossip and slander is not appropriate for God's people. It's sinful. And we are called to abstain from sin. So don't think that I'm trying to create this like hush hush culture around here in any way. Some of that stuff needs to be addressed, and it should be. We just have to do it in a proper way. Point number three let your words be uplifting. This is huge. I can remember being so convicted of this several years ago at youth camp because, like I told you earlier, I'm a little bit of a pessimist. 
I focus on the negative things. I'm a realist. Other people will say pessimist. I focus on negative things. But I, I watched this other youth pastor. He was so uplifting, so encouraging, just constantly saying good things, um, uh, and just very uplifting and, and really pleasant to be around. Like just, I actually, you know, there's some people you enjoy being around, some people you don't. I really enjoy being around this guy. And I noticed like the main thing is, is that he was very, very uplifting, very loving, very affirming in people's lives. And it was one of those things I realized, I'm not like that. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we have to be careful not to let ourselves fall into the trap of saying negative things or sharing negative things or destructive things, but always letting our words be beneficial and uplifting towards other people. That's huge because we're supposed to be the salt and the light, right? We're supposed to be attractive. We're supposed to be the thing that is beneficial to other people, the thing that people want more of and not necessarily the people that people want less of. And so in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32, Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus, and he's talking to them about their language and the words they're using. He says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Now, this is tough because this is one of those things, it's, it's not easy to do. Now, to me, the, the biggest thing that jumps out from that passage is just the whole concept of forgiving one another. If you go to church, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna unwrap it for you. If you go to church any amount of time, for any length of time, there's gonna be somebody at church that does something to hurt or offend you. It's gonna happen. We're people and we're not perfect. Are we? Are you? I'm not. Any amount of time that you're there, there's going to be something that happens where someone's going to hurt or offend you in some way, shape, or form, and you're going to have the opportunity to say, they did this, they're not who I thought they were, I can't believe they did this, and you can gossip, you can slander, you can say all the things about them that you want to say, or you can be tenderhearted and forgiving one another just as God through Christ Jesus has forgiven you. And there are going to be things that happen inside the body of Christ that are wrong. You with me today? There are going to be things that happen that are absolutely wrong. There's going to be things that people say to you, things that people do to you that is absolutely wrong. But there's a calling on your life to be more than just venting in anger, than being petty, being quarrelsome, and then gossiping and slandering and just talking about it constantly. You are called as a follower of Jesus Christ to be forgiving just as Christ Jesus has forgiven you. That's hard. That is, that is one of those things I'm going to stand up here and I will tell you today. That's much easier said. It's easier to talk about it right now in this controlled environment and setting than it is to enact in everyday life. But that's what we're called to do. Jesus has so much more for you than just spreading juicy gossip, venting in anger, and, and, and harming people with the words we say. There's so much more for you than just the information that you can receive and the information that you can pass along. John 13, 35 says, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And when you think about this, the world knows what slander is. It's, a, it's out there. Every day. The world knows what gossip is. It's out, that's what the news is. Articles, magazines, all that stuff. It's all gossip and slander. And now it's to the point where it has to be printed so fast, people don't even check facts anymore. So it's like half and half now. What we used to refer as reliable news is like half and half. The world knows what that is. And if that's a part of who we are, if that's a part of who we are as individuals or if it's a part of who we are as a body of Christ, 
the world will not be able to identify us as the disciples of Jesus Christ. It says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Self-control, abstaining from sin, abstaining from gossip and slander, and letting our words be uplifting to the world. Those are the things that Christ has called us to do. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this day and for the opportunity to come together and to read your word and to open up our hearts and be vulnerable to you for a time. And as we sit here today, Lord, I pray that none of us would walk out of this room without just taking the moment to say, Jesus, speak to me. If I'm guilty of, of receiving, if I'm guilty of, of passing along information, whether it's slander or gossip or whatever it may be, Jesus, I pray that you would help us all to be humble and allow you to cleanse us from this, but also to guard us from this. Help us to be aware. And I pray, Lord, as, as we go out this week, Lord, whether we get a phone call today or we're sitting down with conversation with someone today, God, that we would, we would not be afraid whenever that information begins to be shared that we would just say, nope, like, look, everything within me wants to hear this, everything within me wants to say this, but I'm choosing Jesus and you're going to have to stop. God, help us to be bold enough to just take that stance. Lord, nobody else can argue with that because we're the ones that's going to have to stand before you one day and give the account for what we chose to receive and what we chose to pass along. Jesus, we love you, and we ask you to be with us in all we do. In your name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.